So hi everyone. Today we have a special guest on our channel. We have Akshat with us. So Akshat, would you like to introduce yourself once? Uh, hello everyone. Myself Akshat. I am currently working as a software engineer at Intuit. In the past, I have worked with Salesforce, and I have also done an internship at Cisco. Hmm hmm hmm. Right right right. So as you guys can see, he has cracked three product based companies back to back. So he has pretty good experience that we'll be getting to know of today. So Akshat, before we go into the rest of the video, can you tell us about your uh, Intuit interview experience? Like, how did you apply? How many rounds were there? What all happened? Uh, sure. So last June, um, June twenty twenty four, I reached, yeah, like I, I was just browsing LinkedIn and I got to know about this opportunity through uh, someone in my network, and they were asking them to to reach them out with a Google form. The normal process. I filled the Google form and I did not expect much, but I got the OA, so the online assessment for into it. It come just in consisted of five questions. Um, some were uh, like two, three of them were easy, and some were medium hard. So the uh, like first two problems were really easy, like code forces twelve and uh, around twelve hundred rating, and one was related to maths and coordinate symmetry around like fourteen hundred, and one was uh, like almost similar to a lead code problem, maximum difference score in a grid. It was around 1600, 1700, I would say. And there was a binary search pro on answer problem as well. So after the OA, it was a 90 minute OA. And after the OA, I got uh, the interview call uh, the next day itself. Interview was in five days. Um, in like in the interview, initially this, that was taken by two senior software engineers at here at Intuit, and they they asked about my previous work experience, uh, which was uh, I talked about my experience at Salesforce, my experience at uh, Cisco, uh, everything I did in my internships, and then they also asked a lot of about uh, a lot about my projects. Um, I had a project about uh, which is like. Which we relied a lot on Oops, so they went in, they picked that up from the project itself and went deeper into Oops. They asked a lot about Oops, uh, like runtime polymorphism. Uh, they gave me some code and asked uh, what should be what would be the output for this code. Uh, it was based on polymorphism itself. They asked me about the loading and like all of different things related to Oops. Um, after this, uh, they started uh, grilling me about operating system. Um, I had mentioned my resume and um, in my introduction there as well that I have experience, like I have learned about operating systems, DBMS and everything else. So they asked about operating systems um, like virtual memory, thrashing, all the well-known operating system concepts. Uh, in the end, uh, he started uh, questioning me about stuff from my resume. So he picked, um, like he picked up my projects. He started asking me about uh, why have I used this database with for this project. So very uh, project specific questions, and they were like, we had an entire discussion about why this uh, DB is better than the different DB, the different types of DBs. So. This was all in the first round. And after this, the second round was scheduled after two days. Um, in the second round also, the interviewers, there were two interviewers, both uh, started questioning me. They started, uh, just like the first interview, they asked about my previous work experience. Then um, we had a discussion about uh, semaphores, mutex, transactions. So they were asking me these questions because uh, they use these concepts in their code. So yeah, they were asking me how uh, we can do this, like real life problems from their own uh, projects. And they were like kind of trying to understand how a person would, who hasn't worked in such companies with such projects would solve these. So I gave as based on what I knew about mutex, semaphores, et cetera. Um, then they gave me two DSC problems. They were easy lead code, easy type problems. And uh, yeah, that's that was it. After that, uh, after two, three days, I got the call for the selection. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So that was pretty detailed way that you've explained. I'm very glad for that. So <clears throat> let's single out the DSA. What do you feel was the overall difficulty of DSA? And I'm very glad that you explained uh, via code forces, you know, for our CP friends, but let's say for our non CP friends, by lead code uh, standard, what did you feel was the overall difficulty that you felt for DSA? So um, 
as like for others the overall difficulty i would say is that um, like in even in lead code there are like contests and there are easy medium and hard problems so few of them were easy and most of them lied in the range of medium itself there were not very hard problems uh, most were medium and few of pro- few of them required uh, uh, understanding of multiple concepts used together like there was a problem which used dp and uh, which also used binary search so like there were problems combining one or two concepts but it was not uh, uh, like very hard everything was within uh, lead code medium Mm, I think just having three difficulty kind of is not fair enough, you know, because one hard can be actually very hard and one hard could be, ah, it's easy. That's why code forces is, is much better, you know, your 16 and red, 12 and red, 18 and red, it's much easier. So yeah, I totally, totally understand that. All right. <clears throat> so like I uh, was telling the viewers, you know, and like you've told me, you've cracked companies like Cisco, Salesforce and uh, Intuit and all of them have good rounds, you know, Intuit also you've explained and that the rounds were good, DSA needed good and they had other technical questions also right so let's talk a bit about your preparation that how did you prepare all the things let's say dsa the technical aspects of it to be on a level that you were able to crack all of these interviews so i'll start with my like how i started my coding journey um i when i joined the college i initially had some experience with c++ i had uh, chosen to take it as a subject in school itself so that helped me a bit in the beginning um in the first year i was introduced to competitive programming by my seniors we have a really good society at our college for computer science engineers and uh, they introduced me they, we had like monthly contests and i started doing cp from there on code forces code chef so initially um i was struggling with code chef also because i had not done anything like that before seniors helped me um, and i I would recommend starting with hacker rank for basic stuff very basic stuff so hacker rank was like the first website on which i spent a lot of time um i did all the questions it helped understand the entire language in a way better uh, than uh, like directly jumping into questions after that uh, i started with code chef code forces i used to give long contests lunch time contests chef um like long contests were really helpful because uh, you days to think about a problem and uh, even code forces i started with div3 there was not div4 at that time so div3 was the lowest one i started with that i used to give those contests uh, like there is a website uh, where you can see all the contest uh, calendar so it's i think it's c list uh, the website name is so i used to go to that web- website and uh, check which or contests are there in the next day like i had this whole schedule doing contest almost every day so i think it me a lot initially and uh, pr- like after that i started go- go- doing more harder problems like and uh, i like what i used to do is i did not uh, um, like follow any sheet for uh, big types of questions um started uh, with the problem and um i struggled with the solution if i am not able to figure it out i decided to read the editorial or like uh, check the tags of the problem and try it again if like ta- checking the tags also didn't help i used to read the editorial and uh, if i if that's something new which i hadn't encountered earlier then i had to read more about it and learn it so i preferred learning on the go rather than following some entire sheet because uh, like learning on the go also helps because you don't know what kind of problem you are encountering so after uh, like going through the entire problem and giving it your all when you figure it out that it was related to this concept it helps you during an interview as well yeah so i think this helped me a lot um i used to give other contests as well like um uh, google kickstart meta hacker cup Um, i was able i even gave icpc uh, twice time i was uh, able to make it uh, to kanpur regionals and uh yeah that's all like that's how i started coding and i think uh, one major thing is like finding people like you who are also uh, interested in the same so i had a group at my college where 
all of us were uh, really into this CP and all problem solving and all. So we used to discuss these problems in detail after the contests are over. I think that environment helped a lot in my preparation. Hmm, correct, correct, correct. And you know, even uh, that reminds me of my college. We also had something similar. Otherwise, uh, problem solving becomes very frustrating if you try to handle it alone, you know. But when you have a friend, you do a contest, you were not able to do a problem, then you realize your friends are also not able to do the problem. Then you get together, discuss. It's a really great thing. It basically makes you fall in love with problem solving, you know. You stop thinking of it as something that is required to do placement, which it is, but you know. <clears throat> You rather fall in love with it. So I really like to say to my uh, viewers, right, that CP is a superpower, basically. It may not be necessary, but it basically gives you a superpower during OA or interviews. Things just become so much easier for you. So let's say that you did CP, you did code forces, you have good ratings also. Although ratings doesn't matter, but obviously you had good ratings in code forces, code ship, because you were consistent with it. So did you feel the need to... Uh, do DSA apart from all this or did you feel like that was enough or did you also grind on lead code along with all that? So I used to do CP on different platforms. I did I hadn't done lead code uh, until my third year had started. I got uh, like I knew about it earlier as well but I decided in my third year because there was like internship season that started and all so I decided that I'll also give a go at Lead code is also a good website because it gives you the questions directly. Like you can read the problem and uh, it will be only related to one single concept. So it's like they are challenging you to solve a problem of that kind directly. You don't get confused a lot. So I preferred that also. I used to give those contests like weekly and bi-weekly contests. Sometimes I they are like because very early in the morning, sometimes I miss them, but I try to give them all. Um, I would uh, say lead code is also nice. Some most of the interviews um, tend to stick with lead code questions itself. Uh, they tend to ask lead code mediums and hards, like changing them by a little bit. But uh, there are some other companies which also asks uh, like uh, way different questions, like media net etc. So I think lead code is fine for from a DSA perspective, getting to know all the data structures and algorithms. But uh, like um, even the code forces and all are better if you want to just go into the uh, the problem solving itself. You don't think about exact data structure. Hmm. Right, right. And I think that is a very important thing to do. I mean, both are important. One is that you go pattern by pattern yeah. to understand the pattern, <clears throat> to be able to recognize the pattern. But then in the interview, you will not know what pattern it is, right? So you also need to be solving without a bias that this is a stack problem, this is a queue problem. That's what code forces or coach gives us, right? You have no idea what the problem is about as soon as you read it. It might be math, it might be ad hoc, it might be a graph problem, it might be DP. So that's why I think giving contest, even if you're not into competitive programming, giving contest even on lead code is a must, right? That is a non-negotiable thing. That you must need if you want to crack a company like let's say uh, Intuit or Salesforce, all right. So let's say apart from the problem solving, because as I can see, your problem solving was pretty set by your placements, right? You were pretty confident in it. You had done a lot of work in that uh, area. So apart from that, we, you have technical things, right? Many companies ask CS fundamentals. Many companies ask DBMS, SQL, and then you have companies that ask Oops. Even system design, you might have come across many companies asking for freshers, right? So what about that? How did you prepare for that? So starting with the uh, oops, um, I read different articles online itself. Um, I didn't follow any YouTube uh, playlist for oops, but I would recommend uh, um, like basically sticking with the language and understanding all oops concepts related to that itself. So like I stick stick with C C plus plus. So any day if somebody asked me to code something up about polymorphism, I could uh, code it directly and even uh, try to understand how polymorphism or some other OOPS concept work directly in that language. So some companies also ask for that. And uh, for DSA, as I as we have already discussed, I had done CP um, and some DSA as well. For DBMS, I um, read a book named Database System Concepts by Silver Shards. And uh, there, I also uh, referred to some YouTube playlists, uh, they, which are some like very popular among people who are studying DBMS for college. And uh, for computer networks, although very few companies ask computer networks, I went with uh, uh, reading Andrew Tannenbaum. 
it's a it's a book by uh, for computer networks for os uh, i stuck with uh, youtube uh, playlists and uh, there is another book by uh, galvin for uh, os so that's what i would recommend for computer fundamentals um apart from this i think uh, not much out of college syllabus is asked in interviews so um if we have uh, like if we pay some a uh, lot of attention in the lectures which which is very mm. rare if that is done then, then people I, don't do yeah <laughs> although it is rare but if that is done then i don't think much require much preparation is required on the fundamental side for at least for this that is that is the thing right if you have those notes and all you can always refer them before the interview right yeah. so i think you're more of a reader right because you haven't referred more of playlist then so do you feel that helped you be more consistent or avoid distraction or did it make you like faster did it make you learn any faster do you think any benefit of that was there just by reading things so um i did watch playlists also for different things like uh... um i used to watch uh, um like regarding cp only i used to watch eric to streams i used to yeah, watch yeah yeah i used to watch playlists by kartik aroda and uh, vivek mm. so i used to watch also but i preferred reading because i trusted uh, books more um mm. i think it helped a bit uh, it, it takes some more time than uh, uh, like watching a video directly but uh, uh, it helps build the concepts more uh, in a more solid way i think so it yeah helps. correct mm-hmm. even i uh, have the same opinion right i have also read a lot of books like about design patterns about cs fundamentals we had a book i'm not able to remember the name even let us see let us see plus plus was there if you might remember right? so i feel that learning by book is very helpful youtube is good but at a certain point you don't know where it becomes spoon feeding and where it is you thinking book will never be spoon feeding it is always you who will have to with a book you might have to google something you might have to learn something so you're still working on this so i think yeah people should take up reading medium articles are there if you don't like books right so that's a pretty great advice all right speaking of advices and tips only right so let's say to all of the people who are watching this video obviously every one of us wants to crack a good pbc and all these names come at the top right into it and cisco salesforce you have so let's say anyone who's watching this video they also want to crack a similar company like that what advice would you like to give to them um so my advice would be um don't give up be consistent uh, you might get uh, you might face a lot of setbacks or get rejected uh, in some companies but don't give up at that point Uh, you just need one accepted <clears throat> one acceptance and you will be set after that and uh, mm-hmm. another thing i would uh, like to advise is always write stuff when uh, solving or thinking like when whenever you are um, thinking about a solution for something whether it be problem solving or something else always write stuff it helps you figuring th- figure things out and you can always refer back to what you had th- thought of earlier hmm Correct, correct, correct. That is very important. You know, basically making notes, uh, so to speak. If every whatever you do, you should be making notes. Even in DS, a lot of people think making notes are not important, but yeah, definitely. Every everything that you do should be making notes. So I guess we have covered pretty much everything about Akshat's journey, his preparation to cracking all of these amazing offers. And if anyone of you still have any doubt, I'll give his LinkedIn in the description. You guys can follow him from there and connect with him from there as well. So thanks a lot, Akshat, for taking out your time, coming on my channel, sharing these wonderful advices and your journey with me and my subscribers. I really hope this helps a lot of students. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity.